Hello, my Immor brothers, back again. In this episode, we're going to continue our discussion on the three kinds of women from the show Insecure. If you remember our last episode, we talked about the basic girl or the average working class girl, which is the 87 octane. Because of the way the show is scheduled and the way the show works, the 89 octane or the mid-level girl, mid-level corporate girl, which is Issa, is the star of the show. So her story is more complex. So we're going to go up a level. We're going to focus on Molly, which is the 92 octane girl. This is your professional girl, your six-figure girl, that 90% of the women actually aspire to. This is what black women call the boss bitch. These are the in charge women, uh, the Olivia Popes, if you will. These particular women start at $100,000 and they can range up to earning two or three million dollars a year. Believe it or not, these are the women I feel most sorry for. Because of their ambition and their drive and their work ethic, they put themselves into a provider role rather than a support role. Whereas women want to be in a support role with children and family internally, externally, the 92 octane of the boss bitch ambition and drive won't let her be that. And they're internally torn because there are very few men on that particular level that can actually do it for them. And their requirements are very, very high. But we're getting ahead of ourselves. And this is just a character sketch. So, like I said, the 92 octane chick is represented by Molly. And we first meet Molly through Issa's description of her. Remember, most chicks aspire to be the Molly type or the 92 type. How different would my life be if I actually went after what I wanted? Maybe I'd be more like my best friend, Molly. She's like the Will Smith of corporate. So they want us to be more environmentally responsible. But it's like, seriously, why do we need trees? <laughs> White people love Molly. Black people also love Molly. Domino, bitch! What am I doing wrong? Wait, you got the La Vinci family to settle? Yep. <laughs> no freaking way, how? I convinced their youngest son to testify. His inheritance was already guaranteed. <sighs> That's unbelievable. Please, please teach me your ways. One day. <laughs> oh, is that the Arab guy? Yes, he said. Hey. <laughs> I love it. So sweet. What are you going to write back? You know, I think I'm just going to call him. Because, I mean, hey means I want to talk, right? Yeah, sure. I think you could. What do you say? He, he must be texting me from a meeting. You know, he's a product engineer. So it's probably engineering shit as we speak. <laughs> Seems like you really like him. You know, I do. You know, we've only been on three dates, but he's so different. You know, I never thought I'd end up with someone who wasn't black, you know? Totally. Me and Jamal are always talking about how we're not each other's types, but I don't know what works. <laughs> Girl, Jamal is fronting. Niggas love Asians and Latinas and Indians and white chicks and mixed chicks. But you know what? If they are not checking for me, I ain't checking for them. Jamal said I was his first. The 85, the 87, and the 89 aspire to be that boss bitch or Molly. And Issa even says in the show that if she really went for what she wanted, she would be like Molly. She calls Molly the Will Smith of corporate, able to wow in the boardroom and also able to code switch and, and have a good time with the average man. Because of her hard work and her accomplishments, Molly has a high sense of self-esteem and a high sense of entitlement. Rightfully so. Hard work and achievement should allow you to upgrade your life and have the finer things in life. But unfortunately, it doesn't translate into the mating market for the simple fact that women marry up because they're in a support role and men marry down because they're in a provider role. And is there, there's a simple fact that the air is thin the higher you go. Same thing with the mating market. The market is thin the higher you go. All women want to level up. 
Molly's no different. She wants to level up. But the thing is, she's in a provider role and providers date down. And Molly's a woman and 92 octanes are women. And they have a problem with doing what? Dating down. Men her and her level don't have any problem with dating down because they're looking for support and not pro provision, which is something that's been in the feminist literature for quite a while now. Uh, the richer sex and the end of men that what they found in all those books is that women have a problem with being providers. They have a problem with dating down. As we see in the next clip, Molly going through the litany of problems that she's having because she's been in the boss bitch mode or the provider mode for so long. She does not how she doesn't know how to play the support role. You okay? Yeah, girl. Uh, you know what? This is your birthday. I don't want to be stopping. No. Girl, stop. What's going on? It's like it doesn't matter what I do, Issa. If I'm into them, then I'm too smothering. If I take my time and try to give them space, oh, I didn't think you were into me. Fine. Sex right away. Lose interest. Wait to have sex. Lose interest. If I don't have sex at all, I don't fucking know. I'm a grown ass woman. I did not sign up for that bullshit. I think your pussy's broken. What? No, I read about it. It's like pussy's breaking everywhere. I think your pussy's sad. It's had enough. And if it could talk, it would make that sad Mark Simpson groan. Hmm. Yes, that's it. That's your pussy. <laughs> You're an asshole. Fuck you, Issa. It's it's not not my pussy. So the support role is a mystery to her. She can't figure it out because it's not straightforward like the provider role is, like the corporate world is. Because the support role is tailored toward the man. Molly hasn't figured that out yet because she's used to having things her way. In one of the episodes, uh, Molly even says something similar to what a man would actually do. Even though it's not included in this particular clip package, Molly says to Issa, you have to sleep with a thousand frogs to find one prince, which is something right out of the pickup book. Because that is male provider thinking all the way. In the next clip, we see that Molly is upset because her Asian um, legal assistant has just got engaged to a black engineer. And Molly's upset because she can't figure it out. She can't figure out what she's doing wrong. Because on paper, the Asian legal assistant shouldn't be married to a so-called high post brother. She can't figure out why a black man or a black high post brother would marry down to a woman that's not as cute, supposedly as she, or not as accomplished as she. All night, I had no idea and I go into the house. Hey and guys, what I miss? <laughs> Molly, I got engaged. She proposed last night. Oh. Wow! Oh my God, I'm so happy for you. Congratulations. Thank you. Here's the story. Okay, Here's okay. the story. So um, okay, so I where was it? I walked in, and my favorite flowers are like everywhere. Oh. And he had these little notes that were like tied. To balloons. Oh, <laughs> wow, for real? Girl, that, that is crazy. <laughs> yeah, they were like tied to my and family. Like, it's a real story. Oh, wow. okay. You deserve it. Hi, girl. It is never happening for me. You sound like you're exercising. You don't exercise. Diane got engaged. A black boyfriend? Yes. Damn. They wife others up with equipment. Right? That cute. You know, I'm not trying to be shady, but why does she deserve to get married and I don't? Girl, stop. Who says you don't deserve to be married? Jesus, apparently he the nigga that gave me this broken ass pussy. Okay, listen, I promise Jesus isn't conspiring against you and your pussy. You need to go out today. No. I'm taking you out. Be ready. Wait. Issa? Issa? She still hasn't figured out how the support role works and may never figure it out. She also hasn't figured out how to be happy with what she has or the role that her life has had provided for her. That's sometimes polar opposite to what women actually really want to her internal makeup. Now, in the last clip towards the end of the show or the end of the series, Molly finally comes to terms with what she has to do if she wants to be happy in the role that life has cast her in. 
After an argument with Issa, in a moment of clarity, she knocks on Jared's door. Now, Jared is the basic working class guy. All things being equal, she would really like Jared and probably make a good companion for Jared and vice versa. Even though she falters with her language, you can hear the internal struggle that 92 octane women go through. I promise I'm not drunk this time. What are you doing here? Look, I know you're over me. Hell, I'm over me too. But I realized I was going about us the wrong way. And I just had all these unrealistic expectations about relationships. And, you know, when it came to us, I should have just lowered my standards. What? Wait, no, I didn't mean it like that. I meant, like, I, I can meet you on your level. And not that it's like a lower level, but it's just. Shit, Jared, you were just different than what I thought. I can't hang my life on trying to date the perfect guy. So I should have just learned to be happy with you. <sighs> Shit, I'm still not saying it right. But fuck. Um Look, I'm tired. Cause when I'm chilling, I'll be coming down. So don't tell me I'm the one I need another pack. How to accept the provider role that she's been cast into by her ambition and by life's cards. How to basically allow a man to play the support role in the relationship. You can hear the code words come through like settle and level, the words that black women actually use. So even though they're being true to the game and true to themselves and even honest with the guy, it comes off as insulting because really it is insulting because any man would know that's not what she really wants. And no man wants to be with a woman that has to make herself happy to be with him because there's going to be a power struggle and a stress on the marriage dynamics if they happen to get together. And every man knows that, which is why the 92 octanes or the boss bitch are the saddest group of women out of all of them because they've cast themselves into a role that they're not willing, willing internally to accept and, there's a very small chance that they were ever going to get out of it. Because like I said, men on their level can marry down. So if the air gets too thin where they're at, they just come down to where the air is rich. So they're a 92 octane man or a high level man can marry an 87 or even an 85. If he's so inclined, those men have three levels to choose from 92 octane only have one at best and how we rate men and how we rate women are completely different. But the 92 octanes are in a man's world and they're playing by men's rules, which causes a lot of anxiety and stress. That's why women like her are constantly on something, something to get rid of the anxiety that they feel from the corporate world, also in their personal world. These are the women that actually come off as crazy, even though they're not. They've been cast into a, a role that is ill suited for them, and most women don't know how to handle it. But anyway. I'm going to wrap this up. There's more we could say because each character can have a series done on them into their psychology and how the environment around them is causing sometimes erratic behavior. But with that, I'm going to close this one out and I'll see you on the next one. This is BGS out.